Bonjour. Good morning. Welcome to this uh, session. We're going to talk about culture this morning. So, culture is uh, extremely important, and uh, the institutions that have really faced up to this uh, uh, challenge ensure that uh, culture is a product, an output, and also a resource, an input that can uh, create a creative capital, a generator of growth, equality, and well-being. Starting from territorial potentials and uh, creates an attractive potential. Now, the using creativity and cultural uh, aspects makes cities more attractive and can use the creativity of its people to uh, drive the economy of the country and of the city. So this morning, for this session, we're going to talk about uh, public policies uh, based on culture, culture-driven public, public policies. And I have the great honor of moderating this uh, workshop based on this issue. So we're going to have a very interesting panel. On my left, we have Izmir on my left. And then uh, Mariana Flores from the city of uh, Mexico City. And Xie Xiong Uk de Jiju. And Jean Pierre from UCLG. And we're going to discuss this issue of culture. So, we're now going to uh, begin by giving the floor to the various speakers. And we're going to start with Unurus from the city of Izmir, who's going to speak for five minutes. Madame Le Maire. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Mayor, be here. Today I will walk you through the story of Izmir and the UCLG um, pilot city program, which helped us a lot when we were increasing our capacity on uh, culture related issues. But first, um, let me briefly make a few remarks about my hometown. Izmir is a city of 4.5 million inhabitants. And the city is 8,500 years old and has one of the largest ports in the Mediterranean. Thanks to historical maritime land routes, Izmir has become an open city to the rest of the world. Hundreds of years, the goods coming from the Silk Road sent to Mediterranean and European cities from Izmir. It is where Eastern and Western civilization mingle for thousands of years. Its geographical location, history, demography have empowered the city for successful economic, social, but also cultural transborder interactions. Goods, services, and people came to the city. People also brought their arts, their culture. Artists came to Izmir. Victor Hugo, for example, who visited the city and wrote in one of his poems that Izmir is a princess with a very nice little hat. Izmir accumulated arts and culture for 8,500 years. One example that I like is the ancient city of Teos. Teos is founded in 1080 before Christ. It is one of the 12 Ionian cities. They built the Dionysus temple, who is regarded as the god of tragic arts and the protector of the theater. What I wanted to say about Theos and Dionysos example, the arts has always been appreciated in the city. We accumulated an impressive number of cultural heritages. And with all those cultural heritages, we believe that Izmir need a cultural renaissance. In this belief, 
The city held a workshop on culture in 2009. Artists, intellectuals and other shareholders worked together for creating the cultural vision of Izmir. And they did manage to reach a consensus. This workshop has led to establish of Izmir Mediterranean Academy. The academy is a direct threat of Izmir Metropolitan Municipality. However, it functions rather autonomously as a democratic platform where people express themselves and make their active contribution to municipal works, a participatory structure. In 2015, under the Izmir Mediterranean Academy coordination, Izmir joined the UCLG Pilot Cities program. Pilot City Izmir program started by bringing all stakeholders together to make an initial self-assessment. Self -assessment. People from governmental, municipal, academic institutions and civil society took part in this process. Representatives from 34 institutions have worked together to work provide together to provide the necessary expertise for the assessment. This assessment allowed us to monitor the impact of the cultural, educational and social policies implemented in accordance with the objectives of the municipality. We have also studied the implementation and results of the ongoing projects. We looked into the emerging issues and shortcomings of the urban cultural development particularly from the point of criteria of Culture 21 actions. According to results of the self-assessment workshop, we observed that Izmir was above the global average in certain areas of culture. However, on the other hand, there was a need for a program in order to fulfill the city's potential for further development. For this purpose, a team of international experts had been invited to collaborate on capacity building. Together with them, we drafted a work program containing innovative measures. We designed an action plan on four thematic areas and we developed a project for each of them. Let me briefly explain. The first project is Culture Lab. Culture Lab Izmir. This is a project on culture and education. Culture Lab Izmir was an initiative which established platform on education among cultural institutions. It has started with a forum including um, it has started with a forum including 17 cultural institutions. The project enabled the city on networking corporations and capacity development. The second project is Good Design Izmir, which is on culture and economy. Good Design Izmir is an annual Design Days event. Primary goal of the event is to promote design and designers. The event brings designers, producers, NGOs, and business circles together. Last month, Good Design Izmir has already been carried out the fourth time. The event has been highly appreciated by the design community. The third project was Baspane Urban Plan which is on culture and social inclusion. Although it is located at the heart of the city, Basmana district has long been neglected. Away from the public attention, nowadays the neighborhood is a slum. However, Basmana is an old district with significant historic value. Nowadays, it is known, it is, it is known as the home of new settlers, mostly refugees from Syria. The project worked for the integration of these people to Izmir's social and economic life. Basmana Urban Design Project contributes to the revival of the district. The project also raised awareness on the social and historic value of the district. The fourth project is Mapping Culture and Art Venues of Izmir. In the project, municipality invited art and culture producers of Izmir to introduce themselves and present their works. These events were organized by Izmir Culture Platform Initiative. Culture platform consists of individual initiatives and organizations willing to contribute to the number of stakeholders taking part in the initiative. And every year, this number of stakeholders increase. increase. Recently, the number approached 300 stakeholders. The project makes statistical analysis and the distributions of the art and culture practitioners as well as, as well as the cultural and artistic space throughout the Izmir. 
The project also defined problems in the field of art and culture. It attempts to build collective actions for solutions. Okay, just, just I'm, I'm wrapping up. And um, we concluded the uh, pilot city ISME program with a final conference. Um, in the conference, we measured that ISME made an explicit progress in the overall criteria. The conference allowed the participants to reformulate their thoughts. And the pilot city program, uh, I mean, I must tell that uh, the pilot city program has positive impact on Izmir municipality policies. It increased interactions between municipality and civil society. Today, the city welcomes a hybrid forms of decision making. A number of advisory boards uh, is established in the city. Cultural life in the city is bustling. The number of local actors in art and culture increased with the arrival of newcomers from the other cities. Several study groups and platforms were established for collaboration. And there is also an increased number of research about Izmir's urban cultural context. So we really increased our capacity thanks to UCLG uh, pilot project. And now uh, this is time for Izmir to take the next step. We will join the UCLG Leading City Program in 2020. And furthermore, we applied for the hosting UCLG Culture Summit in 2021. We hope to welcome you in Izmir in this summit. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, the, you've seen the, in Izmir that the cultural program is very, very important and uh, has involved a lot of cultural players. Now, regarding the various different projects, what really drew my attention is the forum with the cultural institutions and uh, the space devoted to artists this devoted space that they mentioned here people can uh, find artists in the uh, fourth uh, arts project with uh, cultural uh, institutions and uh, stakeholders. So thank you very much for this um, excellent uh, presentation. Now I'm going to give the floor to Mariana Flores from the city of Mexico, from Mexico City. This is, do you see me? Um, voy a hablar en español. I'm going to speak in Spanish. For those who know or don't know Mexico City, I think uh, it's important to say that in Mexico as a country and in Mexico City, above all, culture has a very important role culture is in our daily lives. It's in what we eat, what we dress, what we wear, what we, what we uh, speak. We have a very uh, great diversity of languages, colors, tastes. Now, this diversity is a fundamental part of our, 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 our country, and this is something that's expressed through culture. In Mexico City, we take this very seriously and it's part of our development policies. Now, since December 2018, we have a new uh, government in Mexico City, a new mayor who comes from the world of science and in the environment. And she decided that her government policy should be based on six priorities. The first priority is to do with uh, equality before the law equal rights, so education and health are very important in that respect, equal rights. The second priority is based on sustainability. The third one, mobility. Fourth, safety. Fifth, transparency and innovation. And what's also very important, one of the main priorities of the government is culture. Now, we understand culture as one of the pillars of development and that's why Mexico City has focused on cultural activities 
as a way not just understanding a uh, culture as the fine arts, but also as a, a, a method of inclusion and democratization, and as a mechan mechanism to um, drive culture. There's a product which has been driven by Mexico City called Pillars, and these are innovation uh, hubs for uh, knowledge, education, freedom, and culture. So in these culture points, we open up spaces in the 300 most vulnerable areas of the city and places where people can have access to cultural activities, but also express themselves in these cultural spaces. As you said, we want to create 300 such points over the coming years, and that will also allow people to have access to these means of cultural expression. Now, for a number of years, Mexico City, within the framework of the uh, UCLG uh, Culture Initiative, to launch the CLU uh, Prize for um, Culture 2020 in Mexico City. This prize it was not just an opportunity to show the importance of culture in Mexico City, but also it's become a place for exchanging experiences. And, uh, and it gives greater visibility to various different uh, culture, uh, very different cities and what they're doing in the area of culture, but it's also helped us to mobilize various different players in cultural areas and to mobilize resources. And it's generated a community of good practices for exchanging uh, good practices in the area of culture. Here we see this is the fourth year of the uh, cultural prize that we're launching this month. And it's open until March 2020, and all cities here are invited to participate. One last thing I'd like to say. No, um, important work in the UCLG has been to connect culture with the 2020 agenda. In uh, Mexico City, We've had our first voluntary report on the 2030 Agenda, and in drafting this report, we realized that the, uh, the government's program is inspired by this 2030 Agenda, and a lot of our policies are based on this 2030 Agenda and the, the SDGs, and we realized that there was something lacking. And one of them, this, what was lacking was culture. So we decided to extend this report, not just to base it on the Agenda 2030, but also the global agendas, to include the uh, cultural agenda, but also the Paris Accords, the Milan Accord for, sust for sustain uh, food sustainability, the Haiti uh, uh, goals on uh, biodiversity, among others. And uh, I have very few copies of this report, but if you uh, want them, they're available, or they're also online. And so this, what we're trying to draw attention to this report is how our local constitution and government program and the, the actions that we're doing in the city are very much connected to these uh, global uh, agendas. So, to conclude, I'd like to invite you to be part of this community and part of this uh, agenda for culture, uh, to position culture as the fourth pillar of development. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mariana. I think everyone is going to uh, stick to this uh, uh, agenda for culture. We've already said that uh, culture is the beginning and end of all development. So you mentioned six priorities in your cultural policies, uh, equality, sustainability, safety, culture, transparency. Uh, what? I thought was interesting was that the idea of socialization is here throughout. The idea of integrating culture into all areas of development. And I'm going to give the floor to Mr. Shejung from the city of Jeju.
안녕하십니까 제주특별자치도 평화협력과장 최종협입니다 제주문화분관인의 활동을 발표하게 됨을 매우 기쁘게 생각합니다 Good morning ladies and gentlemen I am 종협체 Director of Peace and International Affairs Division of Jeju Special Central Governing Province I am very pleased to give a presentation regarding the cultural activities of Jeju 아, 간략한 제주특별시도 기도부러 UCLG 글로벌 청년문화 포럼을 추진한 개최 배경과 내용을 먼저 설명하고 작년을 시작으로 지난 2년간 도출한 주요한 포럼 성과와 제주가 추진한 향후 문화정책 비전과 포럼 방향 설명으로 마무리하도록 하겠습니다. Uh, firstly, I'd like to give a brief overview of Jeju Island and then explain about UCLG Global News Culture Forum. And I'll be concluded with the vision of Jeju cultural policies. 먼저 제주 특별 자치도를 소개하도록 하겠습니다. 제주는 한반도 최남단의 섬으로 면적은 싱가포르의 세 배이지만 인구는 70만 명이 사는 섬입니다. 위치는 중국과 일본 사이에 위치해 있고 주요 도시와 직항하는 직항들이 운행되는 동부가 요충지입니다. As the southernmost island of the Korean Peninsula, Jeju is about three times the size of Singapore, with the population of 700,000 people. Being located between China and Japan, Jeju are also served as the key hub of Northeast Asia by connecting major cities with direct flights. 전 세계적으로 유일한 유네스코 상가람과 유네스코 무형문화유산 해녀문화소 등재한 천의 자연과 문화를 갖고 있는 세계가 인정하는 도시입니다. Jeju is the only place in the world to have three UNESCO National Science titles. It was first designated as a biosphere reserve back in 2002. The World Natural Heritage Honor the World Achieves in 2007 and the whole Island was added to Geo Park Network in 2010, and recently the Henya Culture of Jeju was added to UNESCO's Intangible Cultural Heritage. 같은 해 제주는 UCLG 아시아 태평양 기구의 문화분과 위원회를 설립하여 아시아 태평양 도시 정부 및 연합체 등 관계자를 대상으로 국제 문화 역량 강화 워크숍을 진행하고 있습니다. Jeju started as a cultural power city in 2014, which enhanced the awareness of urban culture and carried out the pilot programs. And in 2015, Jeju became a leading city as well as a vice chaired city. 이와 같은 활발한 문화 분과 위원회 활동을 기반으로 하여 지난 2017년 5월 제2회 UCLG 세계문화 정상회를 제주에서 개최하고 이 회의 우석 사부를 글로벌 청년 문화 포럼이 시작하게 되었습니다. In the same year, Jeju established the cultural committee in the US UCLG aspect and hosted international workshop for the approving the cultural capacity of government official in the Asia Pacific areas. Based on these ongoing activities, Jeju hosted in at uh, the second cultural summit in 2017 in Jeju. And the Global Cultural Youth Forum was held as the following up project of Second Culture Summit. UCLG 세계문화정상회의 후속 사업으로 UCLG 문화 20일 아젠다를 기반으로 지속 가능한 제주 발전을 위한 글로벌 청년문화 생태계 조성을 위해 문화 플랫폼을 조성하고자 UCLG와 뜻을 함께하여 협약서를 체결하였고 2018년부터 본격적으로 포럼을 추진하게 되었습니다. The agreement with UCLG and Jeju Free International City Development Center was signed on May 2017 as the follow-up project, the second UCLG Cultural Summit. The three partners have reached an agreement on the Global Youth Culture Forum that build a global culture platform to create youth culture ecosystem for the sustainable development of Jeju, based on UCLC Culture 21 Agenda. And since 2018, the forum has been officially implemented. 작년 처음으로 개최된 GYCF는 문화 아젠다 20일에 문화와 도시계획 공군 공간을 실천하기 위하여 
청년 도시를 빛내다는 슬로건으로 추진하였습니다. 2018년 10월 13, 31일부터 11월 4일까지 5일 동안 진행하였고 글로벌 문화예술 작가들과 22개국의 청년 예술 작가 57명이 제주를 찾았습니다. GICF starting last year was held in October 2018 for five days under the slogan Use Lightning the City participated by global cultural artists 57 young artists from 22 countries and local residents a cultural planning and research project was promoted by dividing group into three parts including Namsang village and old castle and the public design 글로벌 문화예술 전문가의 청년 예술가가 멘토링 형식으로 제주의 문화에 대해 조사하고 토론하는 현장 답사와 기획회 등을 통해 공공 공간을 도시 재생적으로 기획하는 프로젝트를 진행하였습니다. With mentor with global cultural expert and the participant undertook an intense research process which leads to the design and presentation of project aimed to involve local communities in the long-term sustainability, raise awareness on issues related to memories, heritage, and creativity, and the analysis their potential to revitalize public spaces. Okay, let's briefly watch the video clips of this year's activities. Sorry, can you really wait? Okay, thank you for waiting.
Merci. One slide is before the one slide going back. Yeah. No, no, no. Next, next. Yeah. This slide, okay. perfect. No, no. This is the next slide. Next slide. Perfect. No, no. no next. Yes, this slide. <laughs> 원래는. 해빙펀 문화와 예술을 통한 현대화 레즈라는 주제로 글로벌 문화예술 작가들과 8개국의 청년 예술 작가 35명이 모여 지난 10월 8일간 진행을 하였습니다. This year GIC 2019 was held in October for 8 days under the new themes of having fun that approached the form of contemporary leisure through culture and art with 35 young artists from 8 countries. 작년에 도출된 아이디어를 실현하는 팀과 새로운 아이디어를 기획하는 아이디어 팀으로 나눠 진행했습니다. 또한 포로, 포럼 기간에 2019년 대한민국 문화의 달 행사 참가, 국제 커리커처 작가 교류, 제주 원도심 답사 및 제주 신화 강연 등 연계하여 다양한 새로운 변화를 시도했습니다. The project was divided into two teams that realized idea of Soyongcheon memory in Namsang village suggested last year. And one idea team that plans new ideas. We have created a synergy by connecting various cultural events held in Jeju so as not to be just a mentoring forum event. In celebration of Cultural Month 2009 in South Korea, participants interacted with global caricature artists and took part in lectures on Jeju myth and field trips to Jeju Old Castle. 또한 작년에 도출된 아이디어를 바탕으로 원래 실제적으로 실행 옮기는 작업을 진행했습니다. 과거에 남성마을에 흘렸던 소용촌은 지금 돌에 덮여, 덮여 사라졌습니다. Jeju organized to put an idea space on the last forum into practice. Namsang village Soyongcheon which was a place for local communities and leaves has now vanished and has been covered into the road. 참가자들은 과거의 기억을 회상할 수 있는 방안을 생각했습니다. 과거의 기억을 다시 회상할 수 있도록 보시는 그림과 같이 소리를 들을 수 있는 스피커 튜브와 앉아서 머물 수 있는 벤치를 기획하였습니다. 작년에 참가자들이 모여 재료를 구입하여 제작하였지만 설치 단계에서 시간이 부족하여 다음 달에 설치할 예정입니다. The young artists considered how we remind of the old generation memories and they planned the speaker tube and bench for sitting and listening as the screen you see in the last year. They came together in Jeju again as an implement team and took the best effort to install, but it's not enough time. It is scheduled to be installed in next month. Jeju의 글로벌 예술가들과 청년 작가들의 커뮤니티를 조성하고 이들이 자유롭게 창작하고 활동할 수 있는 플랫폼을 구축하기 위하여 글로벌 청년 문화 포럼은 해마다 개최되고 매년 발전해 나갈 것입니다. The, uh, GRCF will be become a venue for the young artists and global cultural experts to come together in order to build an ecosystem for the youth culture that have construct viable use 
are the projects and policies on culture for expansion for young artists in devil with establishing a network. <웃음> 원래 UCLG 아스펙 문화분과 위원회 활동에 대해 설명하겠습니다. 지난 6월 제주 헤비치 아트 페스티벌 연계하여 SD 달성을 위한 문화와 관광의 시너지 창출을 주제로 15개 도시에서 참가자 50여 명이 대상으로 국제 문화 역량 강화 워크숍을 진행하였습니다. Jeju has organized a workshop that aimed to build the capacity of participants on culture and tourist policy development and promote awareness and recognition of the importance of SDGs. It is also held in conjunction with Habitat Art Festival, which promotes performance art related business news and exhibition booths, or hosting showcase in various, various genres across the Jeju Island. Okay, the, the time is, uh, is up. Um, I'm afraid you have to, to wrap up now. You have uh, you had 10 minutes, so I'm afraid you have to, uh, to wrap up now. Indonesia. <laughs> 수라카 카르타와 청년 예술인 교류 프로젝트를 추진하고 있습니다. 화면에 보이는 도심 어린이 공원에 제주의 활라산과 수라카르타의 활라, 화산을 모티브로 어린이 놀이 공간을 기획하였습니다. Over, over we'll be able to look at this in the, during the discussion. Yes, each speaker had uh, 10 minutes. You've already gone uh, you, well over time. But anyway, thank you very much. So, thank you very much. That was a very nice presentation from Mr. Zhang Zhu. Thank you very much for uh, all of your ideas and your presentation. We're now going to give the floor to Mr. Jean-Pierre Lombassi, who's going to explain this uh, project on uh, public policy. Good morning. Um, you all receive on your table this document name African Capital for Culture and I'm going to those who did not receive means you came late so I don't know if they are spare one, but uh, if you came late, we'll provide you with later on. Since I have 10 minutes, and the president is so strict on timing, I will go into it by telling you very shortly um, why do we create this program on the African Capital for Culture? Um, as you know, Africa is the cradle of humanity. And it, it, it has unprecedented cultural depth. But this cultural depth has been faded. If you go to the, the UNESCO register, on cultural heritage, less than 5% of the registered heritage is from Africa. But we know that Africa is where humankind has been born. And we know the richness of our immaterial uh, heritage. So it is very critical that Africa recovers its rightful place in the world of culture. And here at UCLG, we defend, we advocate for culture to become the fourth pillar of sustainable development. And because of that, we want to celebrate the African culture. And 
thanks God, the UNESCO just adopted very recently the uh, World African World Cultural Day for Africa. This is the uh, uh, World uh, Cultural African Cultural Day. It will be celebrated every 24th January because 24th January 1963, the uh, 65, I'm sorry, the African Union adopted uh, the Charter on African Culture. So the celebration, take the date, 24th January each year, you will be celebrating the International Day of African Culture. And in Marrakesh, during the last summit of local government called Afri Cities, we adopted the program on the African Capital of Culture. And the aim of this program is to structure, empower, and network the cultural and creative uh, actors of the African continent to develop a public and private ecosystem that will culturally be in independent and autonomous but eco economically sound, sustainable, and viable. The ambition of the African culture of, uh, uh, capital of culture is to affirm and promote the continent's cultural identity and the cultural reappropriation of Africans by and for themselves. And you know that Africa is the key to the future. In all areas of transition, it faces issues crucial to the future of humanity and the future shape of its civilization. These problems are of an unprecedented complexity, and this is why Africa cannot borrow its solution from anyone. Celebrating African culture, African culture through a network of capitals mean encouraging and organizing this solution based on the singular urban culture it gives rise to. It means restoring to Africans the awareness and control of their creative power and their community of destiny. Cities where the original fabric they create are the level of action that makes it possible to articulate a proximity policy and a global affirmation strategy. Every three years, the Organizing Committee of African Capital of Culture will highlight through a particular city the creativity of the continent and not just the city declared the capital. An African capital city of culture will celebrate Africa and Africa will celebrate it. The celebration is therefore not reserved for the chosen city, but opens up to pan-African programming and the visibility of creative initiative from other cities on the continent. All African cities and local authorities can therefore be partners of the uh, African uh, capital of culture. Partners also partnered every three years of an African capital of culture city by supporting artists and creators from their, their territories. Partner also in multi-year development program with network of the continent's talent and cities. Because in the interval between the two capital, uh, uh, African capital of culture, the organizing committee feeds the development of cultural programs. The action of the capital, uh, the City, uh, cultural capital of cities is therefore permanent based on a public-private model, both in terms of structuring initiative and financing. The organizing committee of the African Capital of Culture may provide cities interested in the African Capital of Culture label with expertise and advice in order to prepare the future application by first developing the necessary creative fabric. Provide city and local authorities wishing to increase their specific, specific creative potential with targeted advice and connect them with appropriate uh, mod, uh, operator models 
in the uh, sector. Integrate the operators, administrative and elected officials into training program, workshop or master classes. Support the financing of the arrival during, during the African Capital Culture edition of artists, creators and projects led by African local authorities. Include representatives of local and regional authorities in the discussion of cultural and creative policies. Of course, cultural development is not in vain. It generates many benefits. The African Capital of Culture are a program promoted at the international level for the African culture and creative actors to tap into the world market of arts and culture and put Africa on the global cultural map. The impact in terms of image and visibility is significant. The tourist and economic benefits are just as important. But participating in the momentum of the African capital of culture also make it possible to structure its territory to think strategically about urban development, to involve the population, and to offer them both general and to open up the wind of the world and concrete perspective, to build employment, create, reactivate, or develop sectors adapted to the asset of the territory, to connect its active youth to the dynamic of the continent. Cities and local government that contribute to the action and to the success of this great ambition uh, can contribute by relaying the institutional and general communication of uh, the capital uh, of culture, by pointing out to them the creative initiative of their territory, by formally becoming a partner to the organizing committee of the capital of culture, and by providing multi-year financial and logistic support. I thank you. Thank you very much. We're now going to give the floor to Jordi from the, uh, the UCLG uh, Culture Committee. Merci beaucoup, Madame la Maire. Uh, firstly, let me, let me convey the apologies from Minister Mzewa, who, because of a last-minute commitment, he, he couldn't uh, come to, the, to, this, to this session. And let me also congratulate all the speakers for the great uh, inputs, great speeches that you all have uh, given to the, to the audience. Uh, let me also say hello to the Vice President of the Cultural Committee, Luca Bergamo, Vice Mayor of, of, of Rome, as well as uh, key people in our network, uh, Juan from Terrassa, Imanol from Donostia, Nico from Coahuatla, Valeria Marcolin, the Director of uh, Creative Mobilities, uh, Mark Villarubias from Lyon, winner of the award uh, Mexico City in 2018, who will tomorrow be in this special session of culture together with, with Luca and, and other speakers. Uh, let me just insist in two, two important points. The first one is the importance of our award. We just opened the call for the fourth edition of the award. The call is open. You are now able to submit your candidacies. And let me explain that almost all candidacies, all candidacies that match the criteria that is two years of experience and really focusing in the relation between culture and people. The tradition is that the jury selects those candidacies to become good practices. So I encourage, we strongly encourage you to submit a candidacy to the, to the award. And second important thing I would like to emphasize is that the presentations that you, you, you heard from Jeju, from Izmir, from Mexico, they are uh, a part of our capacity building and, and learning programs, which are four. The Leading Cities Program, in which we provide support to those cities with great experience, like Mexico, like Jeju, like Rome, uh, like other. Pilot City Programs, in which we, uh, as we did with Izmir, as we did with Terrassa, we accompany them uh, during three years, creating great capacity, local capacity for cultural actors. 
and then two small workshops that we also offer to cities, the Culture 21 Lab and the Seven Keys. If you want more information on this, please let, let us know. And let me finish uh, also expressing uh, our, our support, our gratitude to Jean-Pierre uh, Embassy and to the whole team of UCLG Africa for having had the courage to launch this great initiative, the African Capital of Culture. Uh, as you, you heard uh, how uh, Jean-Pierre uh, uses the words and describes the objective of the capital, uh, African Capital of Culture, which is very close to our capacity building and learning programs. It is not us, let me be bold, it is not the European Capital of Culture, which is another initiative. Africa relies in capacity building, in networking, in uh, global uh, uh, in, in, in being global and at the same time uh, creating uh, the local and national capacities for for culture, we will be in the UCLG Culture Committee supporting uh, this initiative and please also stay connected to Marrakesh 2020 and to the future African capitals of, of culture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jordi. I think now we can give the floor to the to the floor. <laughs> if there's anyone who would like to uh, to ask a question or make a comment uh, of those listening, then please do so. The mm. reaction. Anyone would like to react? Any contributions, any questions from the audience? Yes, I can see a hand up there, over there. Uh, Good morning, uh, I'm here uh, from uh, working with Creative Nobilities for the uh, event that you will have on Ger on Thursday, 14th, and uh, also the, the, the partnership of the, uh, the Commission Committee for a long time on the promoting the role of culture in the development of territories. I'd like to uh, congratulate all of the work that's been done by the uh, uh, Culture Committee, which is very much connected to the partnership with the civil society. This is something I think is very important uh, to remember here, because uh, today when we talk about um, sustainable development goals. It's only together that we can uh, achieve these uh, these goals. A, a key in all the initiatives of the committee for the cities, of the forum for the uh, the youth of Jeju or the Ab African capitals of culture, as we've heard. This is very important. So, I'd also like to talk about the aspect of the um, pilot uh, cities uh, program, which I think is very interesting. And it's this uh, cross-cutting approach, which takes into account the contribution of culture to uh, various different aspects of uh, uh, economic and social t uh, territorial development. And we can see how, through culture, we can uh, rethink the development in these uh, areas, uh, such as in Mexico City. So this aspect of uh, multi-stake initiatives, uh, multi-stakeholder initiatives, I think is very, very important. Uh, this is something that was, uh, is put, is written uh, in the text, but it can be difficult because of financing, because it, uh, it moves towards very specific uh, actors. And so it's very important that we think about reforging links to creating these uh, common dialogue platforms so that uh, local uh, government and civil society can work together because the solution is something that can only be achieved together. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. Hi. Hi, everyone. This is Juan from the city of Tarrasa in Catalonia, Spain. Uh, and I would like to only to my contribution uh, in the name of the city of Tarrasa that we have been working the last three years on the pilot uh, program, city pilots program of culture. 
and uh, we are really delighted uh, about the co co culture commission or with also with the help with uh, Jordi, Jordi Pasquale and Jordi Balta and all the team of the culture commission because for us it has been a great experience and now we are finalizing our, our three years uh, project in which we will now organize some kind of uh, inside event but uh, for us it has been really 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 helpful uh, on uh, knowing uh, how we are in uh, the culture in the city, which are the, the public policy we have to address to the citizenship and in which uh, kind of uh, ways we can uh, get uh, better and uh, understand how the culture should be on the front of the uh, development in the city and in the, all the area. And I would like to thank everyone. It has been really a, a, a great uh, project. Afterwards, I will contact to Mariana because uh, I think it will be important also for us to know more about this project of Pilares and perhaps we can exchange some, uh, some issues and collaboration in future. And I would like to, to, to tell also that we are here to bring uh, also our, uh, our capacity for, for having and making the projects common projects. Thank you very much. Merci. Thank you. Madame la Présidente, merci. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Madam Chair. I'm part of the um, uh, Magel, which is the uh, which is, has a partnership uh, across Africa for um, through AfroCity, and I'd like to thank uh, Jean-Philippe uh, Bassi for this initiative. It's a joint initiative. What I'd like to say is that traditionally, when we talk about uh, culture, cultural politics, the uh, state policies. It's usually states that are in charge of. Uh, of heritage and their, and their work with uh, UNESCO, but it's good that in the recommendations that cities should uh, drive for this idea of culture as a fourth pillar of development in the case of decentralized uh, policies. And that often we tend to work on in social inclusion, on infrastructure, on housing, and uh, you know, urgent aspects of city, but uh, culture should be an important part of this, should be an, an essential condition here, which is what we hear from uh, Rabat and Dakar and other cities. Thank you very much. Merci. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, Nicolas Aguilar from Cuautla, Mexico. I would like to ask the panel if you can share how do you convince the elected officials who are in charge of making the policies to actually consider the culture as the fourth pillar? Uh, because it seems like uh, in our case, the culture in the city is not a problem. We have events, many events, but it's not connected really to a, a development. Uh, the elected officials don't really care. They just leave us, the operative people, to do the events. But how do we, how do you do it? How have you done, convince the mayor even? And if I can, I can make a request, if this is possible, to ask some mayors to maybe write to my mayor and tell him the importance of culture. I don't know, it's just an idea. That, we're here for solutions, so maybe I'm looking for one. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. Madame Kissem Aditala, Vice Mayor of uh, the city in Tunisia. Now, my question is about the um, conditions for participating. What really drew my attention is that Mr. That he said that you needed two years minimum of experience. And now, what's that about? Because in Tunisia, as you know, municipal elections took place on the 6th of May 2018. So all of the municipal councils have, were set up in June. So we have just one year and six months of experience. But you've, you mentioned two years, so my question is uh, about the possibility of whether or not we would be allowed to participate, given that we don't have those two years. Thank you. Merci, Jean-Pierre. Je vous laisse répondre. 
Thank you, Jean-Pierre. I'll leave you to answer the question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, I'll just start. I will start by your question. How do you convince a leader of a local government to consider culture as a local policy and not to just be watching events, a series of events in the city without connection? I think there is a a problem of a general problem of our our uh, leadership to understand that um, what build your self esteem and personality is what characterizes you to be on the map you should be unique and the uniqueness come from your personality in terms of culture every city has roads every city has uh, 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 houses every city has this is not what distinguishes a city what distinguishes a city is is cultural identity and the cultural identity is the brand of any city and this is why in europe they put up this idea of a capital of cities so that people that host this uh, cultural uh, uh, event build themselves as unique in Europe like Bilbao Bilbao build a huge museum and the development of Bilbao is now around this museum many cities are doing the same in Marseille they build the museum and we, we see now how the museum is propelling Marseille on the map. And you don't have to have only buildings. You can have immaterial uh, uh, activities, event, but you need to put it in a police, a, a local policy. Because when you put it in a local policy, then you gain your brand. We will call your mayor, why is he not here? We are talking of culture in city, he's not here. So get him the message that is welcome in the Commission for Culture of UCLG. And that we are open to interact with him and to discover in your city what is the uniqueness of your city that he can sell to South Africa and to the world. And this we can build together, but join the uh, Commission for Culture of UCLG. This is my, my response to you. And we will teach him how in his city he can gain from him becoming a cultural hub for his citizen. Because remember, the belonging is the source of pride. And you don't belong if your city is not is just a city you are not proud of. You are proud of a city because of its uniqueness, and you can send a message outside saying, come and visit this unique place. And you can say why it is unique. So my question, my answer to you is that clear, and I hope that you convince your mayor to join the commission. Now, second question, uh, this is your question, uh, is facts qualify to, to be part of uh, the, this, this endeavor? So you, you have to respond. You, you. The, the, the one on um, the creative mobility, all those Culture is what binds us together. So culture cannot be a sector. S culture is intersectoral. And you, 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 should, you should put in all your endeavor a cultural dimension. Because this is where you rally the citizens.
all of them, stake, all the stakeholders. When we take creative mobility, mobility is just going from one place to another. But if you, you put culture into the creative mobility, then you see how transport becomes a, a journey, a, a cultural journey, and uh, not, uh, not a hurdle, but something that uh, brings people together. And this is what they have done in Medellin, in, 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 in uh, Colombia. And it is fantastic. They have, they have built a new city owned by all the citizens while the city was divided between those living in the barrios and those living in the, in the center. Now, through the creative mobility, through the cultural uh, 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 equipment and cultural services, they are building the linkages between all the citizens. So culture participate to the building of the, a new citizenry. And finally, culture has to do also with planning. And you are right when you say you need to have this dimension in every planning system that we have. Many of our plans, and I'm an urban planner, we didn't care about culture. We care about uh, roads, transport, etc. We didn't. We never care about culture. Culture is now coming as an additional when we have done the others. Let's put culture at the center of this, and you will see how the planning will change. For example, if you take the condition of women participating in public space, you will see how you change the management of public space. If this perspective of women in your, the culture of your women is, is, is brought in on board. Many of our planning don't have a clue of all this. So the thanks to the Commission on Culture, this is coming up and I hope it will influence the way we do planning from now on. Thank you. Okay, so I think this, uh, we've come to the end of this session. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, reply to the uh, Vice Mayor of, of SFAX. The criteria of the award are, are clear, and the, the project you submit must have uh, must have two, two years of experience. Um, but as we all know, and the, the, the words of Jean-Pierre go also in this direction, very often a project that is uh, in the local government may have been initiated some months before or some years before by civil society organizations. So my, my advice would be that try to track the program you would like to, to present to the award, what happened before your administration took office, and perhaps you can explain that civil society was at the beginning of that project before. Just try to analyze. If this is correct, the candidacy will be welcomed. If this is not correct, please wait for the next edition of the award, because we, we must respect the criteria. Uh, let me also say that we have a small team to provide this kind of advice to any city that has doubts, hesitations on is our award eligible, are we going in the good direction, etc. So feel free to contact us. We provide this, say, uh, technical assistance service. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. So don't hesitate to contact the uh, UCLG Culture Committee in relation to these uh, culture, African culture projects. Okay, thank you very much uh, to all of you for coming to this session. Thank you very much.